Hi, in this video I'll be demonstrating how to set up your Centurion D5 motor to have the security functions. You will need the app and you'll need access to your D5. In this video I will be showing you how to connect a siren, how to set the alarm functions on the D5 Smart. Right, the first thing is to remove the cover. Right, now you'll have access to the controller. If you have a look here, you'll see a series of IOs, Input Output Terminals. I'm going to be using IO5. If you have a look here, you'll see that I've got a thicker white cable. Now, this is the terminal that I suggest you use. All you need to do is connect your siren directly to IO5 and positive 12 volts. The positive wire of your siren goes to the 12 volt terminal over there, and the negative goes to IO5 like so. Now, in my case, I've installed a siren about a meter away from the gate motor. Here is my siren, and you can see I've screwed it into the wall. The cable from the controller from the D5 Smart is traveling over here, and here you can see that white cable. I've then wired that white cable directly to my siren, red being positive, black being negative. If you're wondering what this black stuff is on the siren, it's just that it is too loud and I've just put a little bit of tape here to make this siren softer for this video. Right, I have my meter here to demonstrate how this function works. If you see, I put my positive on the plus 12 volts and I put my negative on IO5. You can see that the meter is measuring zero volts, which means that when there is no activation of an alarm, the controller does not give the siren any current and therefore the siren is off. Now, if I initiate an alarm condition, possibly by bumping this, you'll see that the current coming out of that 12 volt terminal will be able to flow through the siren to the negative and therefore the siren will operate. So I'm going to initiate alarm condition by bumping the unit. Right, so you could see that it got close to 12 volts, but that was enough to activate that siren. I'm now going to show you what to do to set that siren up. Download the app from the App Store or the Play Store. Register the app with the unit. Then you'll come to the three dots. You'll go to Settings. You'll now go to Alarms. In the Alarms menu, it'll say Tamper or Theft Alarm. You can see that this is on. In your case, it was probably off, so all you need to do is toggle it on. Then it says Auto Arm. Have that on. Then you can set the sensitivity. How sensitive do you want the unit to possible theft? For example, how sensitive must the sensor be inside to being bumped? You can set low, medium, high and custom. I've set mine to high. And over here you will see the assigned I.O. Now you can see I've put it to tamper alarm. And the reason being is you can see that this input output terminal can give you three amps. And that is very important for your siren. Although your siren does not use three amps, it does use a higher current than would be required from the other terminals. So you must use IO5 or IO6. And then you can determine how long you want the alarm to activate. Now you can see there I've set mine for five seconds. You can set yours for as long as you like. When the alarm activates, if your phone is currently connected to the unit, it'll also alarm on your phone. You may not have heard, but my phone was also making an alarm sound. So for example, if somebody is trying to break my gate, you can use the safety beams as an alarm. And if you have a look here under the alarms option, it says RB alarms, infrared beams alarm. So I'll tap that. And now it gives you these options. It says RB closing. So it depends on the layout of your beam. Some people have the beams for the closing option and some people have for the opening and some people have for both. I'm just going to show you for the closing as this is the most common. So the first option is to switch it on or off. So obviously you're going to put yours on and now it gives you an option of two types of alarms. I'm going to first show you the break in alarm. This one activates if the beam is interrupted. This works just like a sensor. So if somebody gets in the way of that infrared beam, the safety beam, it'll activate the alarm. Simple as that. 
Now it's asking for how long must the alarm be outputted for. So if you tap here, you can see I've set mine for five seconds. That is how long the siren must activate for. Or if you've connected it to a relay board and to your alarm system, it'll be how long this relay must activate for. So I've set mine for five seconds. Now it's asking me which I.O. port must be assigned to. Now I'm going to select number five. And can you see it's come up with this message? It says a selected I.O. is already assigned. Remember that I used I.O. 5 for my tamper alarm if somebody's interfering with the gates so you'll have to make a decision here if i say yes it now removes the tamper alarm and swaps it with this irb alarm remember you do have another io you could have assigned it to io6 but then just remember you'd have to wire your siren to io6 if you're going to be using it for a siren and now i just press the back button and i'll show you it in operation Right, you can see the infrared beam over here. The gate is currently closed, and as soon as I block the sensor, the alarm will activate. Right, now I'll quickly show you the other option for your IRB alarms. And if you have a look here, it says break in alarm. I'm now going to change that to ambush alarm. And what that does is it stops somebody from hiding. Maybe somebody's blocked the beam and they're hiding in outside of your gate and they're waiting for you to open the gate. So now what it asks you for is how long does the person have to be blocking that beam until the D5 registers an alarm condition. The minimum time is 60 seconds. As you can see, it won't allow me to make it five seconds. So a person would have to be hiding by that beam for one minute. Now it's also asking you which I.O. And in this case, it is still set to I.O. 5. So both the I.R. beam alarms are both set to I.O. 5. Now in this case, it's set to only alarm if the beam is being disrupted for more than 60 seconds. So as you can see, I would have to be standing here for more than 60 seconds for the alarm to go off. Because there you can see I'm moving in front of it and now I'm going away. The alarm is not activating. So this is probably best for an outdoor beam. Right, and just to demonstrate this, I have to be in the way of the beam for one whole minute. Then the alarm will activate. And there you can hear the alarm after one minute has expired. Right, so over here you can see I've got two sets of beams. I've got one set on the inside of the gate and one set on the outside. So this is the best place to do this operation. It will be for the outside beam. 